say tonight, and I think the hardest challenge for any person with, with some experience in some aspects of life is to pass that experience on to a younger generation, no matter what it is. Essentially, you're trying to make life a little bit easier for those to embark or about to embark on a new journey and a challenging journey. It's with this in mind that I've decided to read you a letter to my 16-year-old self. Um, I know it's a little bit different. Um, not because I want to be too self-indulgent, uh, it's not my go, uh, but because I want to provide the nine new players and hopefully a few others on my left here of an idea of what I finally worked out. Worked out after a period of self-reflection regarding the ups and downs of an AFL career, like the one that the new nine players are about to embark on. So when I read this to the players and families especially, please put it in the context of your own unique journey, how it relates to you and your story. Dear John, <laughs> you're about to go to dinner at the Corowa Golf Club in your best flannelette shirt and pair of desert boots. <laughs> Remember, I'm 16. I've still got those boots. Stop thinking how good the sweet and sour pork is going to be for a second and just think how this dinner and signing one piece of paper will start a journey that is still going some 30 years later. Be aware of, of how special it is that you are about to meet one of the legends of the game in John Kennedy, who was about to become your first coach and is also the grandfather of your future captain when you were a coach. <clears throat> Six weeks later, when you were driving out the front gate of the farm for the first time to head to a city over three and a half hours away, and you see your mum crying in the rear vision mirror, stop the car, turn around, and go back and give her a hug. Reassure her that you are not closing the door on your family's close bond, but in fact, opening a door in a world of experiences for you and your family that you never imagined existed. And how over the next 25 years of her life that she will get to know and love your newfound best mates from all over the country and sometimes the world in such a way that she treats them as her own children. And give your nine-year-old baby brother an, a knowing punch on the arm, for he will still be going to games when he's got kids of his own and taking them up to say hello to the players afterwards. He's in the rooms after the game on the weekend. Can't get him out of the bloody rooms. <laughs> in fact, after they get a photo of Lance Franklin and pinch Gary Rowan socks one time after a game, he says that you being involved in footy has been one of the luckiest things that's ever happened to him. When you walk into the club's change rooms for the very first time, look around really closely. Take note of the best players around you and why, are, and why they are that way. Watch the way they train, how hard they push themselves on the ground, in the gym, on a bike, in the pool or anywhere that they think they can help them improve. See how competitive they are and how they challenge each other to get better. Note how some take this to the next level and want to win everything they do, even playing table tennis with the ferocity that their life depended on it. They also want to constantly test themselves against the best and on the biggest stage. Funny how these blokes are also happen to be all Australians and Premiership players. And also note the general banter. This is absolute gold. Be, and I talk to the young blokes, everyone on my left hand side, be the first one into the change rooms and the last to leave. Soak it up every day. This is what you really miss about the game when it's finished. Be an energy giver to those around you. Make sure that people want to spend time with you. And I should have mentioned, make sure you buy a bloody cookbook. As soon as you can when you get to Melbourne as a 16 year old. You need to learn to cook because eating Vegemite toast every night for dinner gets a bit bland. I know our boys have been going through that quite a bit. Not to mention taking the time to study for a degree or at the very least, get to know any one of the many people around the club who have been successful and want to help. You might think that you're too busy, but there's plenty of time in between training, massages and lunch to fit something in. It will help when you're finished, I guarantee it. And, one of my, and when one of the players gives you a nickname that you're not happy with, don't argue the bloody point. <laughs> that just guarantees that it will stick for life. As for the football, listen to the senior players, listen to the coaches and, li and listen to the staff. Everyone at that place wants you to succeed and will do anything to help you. Understand that ultimately you are the one responsible for your career. 
take responsibility, use and challenge the available resources to the maximum. However, the game isn't all roses and lollipops. There will be plenty of tough times, including career-threatening injuries, sprays from the coach, playing poorly, and playing reserves football when you thought that you should be in the seniors. Understand that these frustrations, as difficult as they are at the time, just add to the life experiences that make it all so bloody good. When these things invariably happen, keep remembering that the sun will always come up tomorrow. Ultimately, they are just speed bumps if you treat them that way. And when the coach gets up at the jumper presentation and tells you to make the most of this opportunity, actually listen. And when he says chase and tackle, try to do it, rather than never moving from the goal square. It is actually really important. Don't sit there and just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says that the years fly by and the next thing you know you're retired, he's absolutely spot on. And when premiership players, of which there are many here tonight, tell you that standing on the ground with a medal around your neck is the best feeling you will ever have in your life, and every sacrifice you make is, is worth 10 times, they are also right. Not to mention the contentment and peace of mind it gives you forever afterwards. Above all, soak it up, soak it up, all of it that is AFL football. It's the absolute best time of your life. Make sure that when you finish your career, however long or short it is, that you can put your head on the pillow at night and sleep peace, peacefully knowing that you've done everything you possibly can. John, I hope that you've taken something from this letter. All the best, John. <laughs> um, he's also written a little PS down here, can you bloody smile sometimes when you're on TV? <laughs> Look, we all, we all look forward to an to a exciting 2017. We can't wait for the season to start. I'm really proud to coach this club and these players on my left. We can't wait. Thank you very much.